So the problem asks us to write this in reduced row echelon form. Uh, it's also kind of similar to the Gauss-Jordan solving method, uh, but this is not this is not an augmented matrix, and so we're just writing in reduced row echelon form. Now, if you want to write it in reduced row echelon form, you first need to write it in row echelon form. And row echelon form would have a one there, a one there, a one there, a zero there, a zero there, and a zero there. That would be in row echelon form. Done. Once you do that, then you can uh, write it in row echelon form, or reduce row echelon form, which becomes a lot easier once it's in row echelon form. So let's get busy here. Now you want to try to do the things that would be that that would be the easiest. Um, my strategy is to to go uh, with column one first, make that a one, and make this a zero, make this a zero. That's my strategy. I work in, by columns. Uh, now to make this top left number one. Uh, I, I see this one right here, it's already almost one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the rows. I'm going to switch row one with row two uh, just because uh, uh, this one's already like a one, right? It's already a one, and that, that's just me. You know, you can do it a different way. There's not uh, only one way to do this. So when I do that, I have negative one, zero, and negative four up top, and this is going to be a three, three, three. Did I copy that right? Yeah, I did copy that right. That's, that's one another thing is make sure you guys are copying all the numbers right because it's so frustrating to forget a negative on one number and then realize at the end after you write a bunch of operations. Okay, now the, the, the quick row operations are just like taking row one and multiplying it by negative one. And I'm doing that so that this is a positive one. So this would be a positive, the zero doesn't change, and that would be a positive four. Okay, so now I have... I have my positive one right there. Yay. Okay. Uh, next thing, uh, I want to put zeros for this three right here, and I want this two to be a zero. And I'm going to do those operations both at the same time, uh, but I'll do different colors to try to help, like, help see it. So we have, um, we're going to take the first row, and we're going to multiply it by negative three, and then I'm going to add it to the second row. That'll get, that'll make that three a zero. So if I add that to row two. That'll that'll be my new row two, um, and then let's do uh, for the third row to get rid of this two to make that two a zero. I'm gonna take the first row, multiply it by negative two, and then add that to R three to row three. All right, so let's write our new one. <clears throat> now I already did this red one, so I don't have to do that. I don't have to worry about that. Okay, the the top row stays the same, so it's one. 0, 4. The second row changes. Uh, I have to take everything in the first row and multiply it by negative 3 and then add it to the number uh, that corresponds to it. Is that a 2? Yeah. yeah, it's a 2. I just put two lines underneath it. Um, okay, so uh, 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Add that to that. You get 0. Uh, 0 times negative 3 is 0. You add it to that. You still get 3. Uh, negative 4. I'm sorry, that's positive 4. Positive 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Negative 12 plus 3 is negative 9. Okay, the next one, um, I'm going to take the first row, multiply by negative 2, then add to the third row. So 1 times negative 2 plus that is 0. And then uh, negative 2 times that is just 0, so I keep the 4. See, whenever it's 0, those, those numbers just stay the same. Uh, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Add it to that, I get negative 10. So here's my new matrix, and my first column is what I want it to be so far. Next, uh, I look at this next column, because or this column right here. This is a row. That's a column. Okay, so I want this to be a 1. I, I don't really care about this number right now. Uh, I, I'm trying to make it in the row echelon first. Uh, how do I make that into a 1? Yeah, divide by 3. Okay, so um, okay, I'll write this out. We've got uh, 1 third times row 2. Okay, so that's going to be our new row. Uh, let's write everything that's not changing. We have 1, 0, 4, and I'm writing extra to help you guys understand. When you start getting really good, you start doing multiple row operations at the same time, but here we're only going to do one. So we multiply everything in this row by 1 third. Uh, 1 third times 0 is 0. 1 third, third times 3 is 1. 1 third times negative 9 is negative 3. Okay, my math is good, right? We're good? So far, so good. So now I have a 1, 0, 0, yay, and a 1 right there. Cool. Now I need a 0 here. 
How am I going to make that 4 a 0? Well, I would suggest using the second row because the first number is 0. Because the first number is 0, it's not going to change that number, which is what I want. I don't want that number to change. I want it to stay 0. So we're going to take row. Let's take row 2. No. Yeah, we'll take row 2. And we'll multiply it by negative 4 so we can get... So we can cancel out this positive 4. So we'll multiply by negative 4 because 1 times negative 4 and add it to that would be 0. And we have to add that to row 3. Uh, let's write down the rows that didn't change. The first row didn't change. The second row is not changing. The third row is changing. So let's go. Negative uh, 4 times 1 uh, added to that would be 0. And this is this stays 0 too because 0 times negative 4 is 0 added to 0 0. Let's do this last one. Negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12, right? Negative times negative is a positive 12. I add the positive 12 to negative 10 to get 2. All right, really close to row echelon form. What's the last thing we need to do so that this is a 1? Divided by 2. Oh, that's so beautiful. It's beautiful. Multiply it by 1 half. Row 3 to 1 half. Uh, let's see. Uh, should I rewrite it, make it pretty? No? Okay, so we have 1, 0, 4, 0, 1, negative 3, and the last one's going to be 0, 0, uno. Uh, I should write that in green since that's my operation, 0, 0, uno. All right, so this is my matrix in echelon form. Why is it in echelon form? It's in echelon form because I have all ones right here in echelon kind of order, and then we have the zeros underneath them. Now, how do I make it into reduced row echelon form? Well, to make it reduced row echelon form, these have to be zeros. Now that now that you have everything else in row like in order, this becomes a lot more simpler to think about. Now. Zero, I don't have to do anything to him. He's already zero, okay? Uh, this one has to be a zero. Now, which row am I going to want to work with to make that negative three a zero? Yeah, you're going to want to work with the third row, row because this one and this one are both zero. Because they're both zero, that means it's not going to change this number or this number when I add it to it. That's what you want. So let's take, um, let's go uh, third row, so row three times positive 3, because I'm trying to make this into a positive 3, so that, that adds to that, it gets 0. And we're going to add that to row 2. Now, I normally do two operations right here, but I'm just going to do one to try to keep you guys with me. <clears throat> so my top row is 1, 0, 4. My last row is 0, 0, 1. My middle row is the one that changes row 2. That one's going to take, um, well, the zeros don't change anything, so I'm just going to write 0, 1. And I keep the 0 and the 1 right there because those zeros don't change anything. 1 times positive 3, then add it to negative 3, is going to be 0. All right, we just have to worry about one more number, this guy right here. How am I going to make that 4 or 2 a 0? Yeah, use the third row again. So we're going to take that third row, and we're going to multiply it by negative 4. So when I add it to the positive 4, when I say it, when I add the 1 to the positive 4, it will cancel out. So I add that to the row 1, and it's going to look like these. It's going to look like these. See, the second row stays the same. Last row stays the same. Uh, the top row is the one that's going to change. Now, these two numbers don't change because we have zeros right here. So I'm just going to write 0, 0. No, one. sorry, 1, 0. And then the last one, 1 times negative 4 and add it to the 4 is going to be 0. Boom. This is reduced row echelon form. Now, this one worked out pretty. Now, all of them. Works out pretty. Uh, the next one we're going to do doesn't work out pretty. So this right here is uh, reduced row echelon form. When you, are, when you have augmented matrices, or when, a, uh, when you're solving an augmented matrix using Gauss-Jordan method, you're trying to get this. This right here is just row echelon form. That is not reduced row echelon form. Now, if you got an augmented matrix to look like this, you can solve it. You could just rewrite it in a system of equations, as a system of equations, and you can solve it. If you wrote it like this, then you already have your answer. Let me show you, for example. Here is an augmented matrix right here. You see this part right here? This part was solved by using Ga the Gauss-Jordan method, writing it in reduced row echelon form. This is solved. It's done. 
what is the answer for this system of equations? Your answer is this. Uh, well, this is x, this is the y column, and this is the z column. Uh, the x equals 5, the y equals negative 3, and the z equals 0. How do I know this? Because this is x, this is y, this is z. Look, there's 0 y's, there's 0 z's. x is 5. The other one, x, y, z, no z's, no x's, there's a y, y is negative 3. That's how, that's how you solve these systems, these crazy systems. Now that's using reduced row echelon form. You don't have to use that. You can just use echelon form and then rewrite the system and solve it using substitution. You can do that. Okay?